Hello everyone. Today we'll talk again about free water restriction and go into more details than we did previously. You would have observed in your clinical practice that despite keeping your patient on one liter water restriction, your sodium can sometimes rise too rapidly or even fall. Today we'll try to understand the reasons why that's happening. If you want more basic lecture on this, please watch how much fluid restriction my patient needs. Different type of hyponatremias respond differently to fluid restriction. In translocational hyponatremia, there is no need for fluid restriction and you can correct the underlying condition. In psychogenic polydipsia, the problem is that patient is drinking too much water, so they are going to correct very rapidly. So you should fluid restrict them and use D5 and DDAVP to chase the rising sodium. In SIADH or SIAD, these are good candidates for fluid restriction since the urine osmolality does not change very rapidly and these patients can respond very well to fluid restrictions alone. In hypovolemic hyponatremia, after you correct the volume status, these patients behave like psychogenic polydipsia and you should fluid restrict them and use D5 and DDAVP to prevent sodium from rising rapidly. Hypervolemic hyponatremia, these are also very good candidates for fluid restriction and can respond to fluid restriction alone. This is a depiction of human body with sodium of 110, total body water of 42 liters with ICF and ECF compartments. Initial body osmolality is 220 and initial total body solute is 9240. The sodium levels in the system will depend upon amount of food and amount of water you drink and also depend upon how much you are losing in the urine and how much your incipient losses are. So you can see that the sodium level in the system will depend not only on your amount of water that you are drinking but also amount of food, amount of urine and amount of incipient losses. Let's look at effect of changing food intake with one liter free water restriction. You can pause the video and you can go through the steps of calculation. Here, we'll take X amount of milliosmoles in food and solve for different values of X. A normal adult diet has around a thousand milliosmoles and an NPO patient will have zero milliosmole. So you can see that if you're eating a normal diet, the sodium level in the next 24 hours is going to be 116. However, if you just ate half your diet, that's 500 milliosmole, your sodium will not have changed. And if you did not eat anything, your sodium levels actually have fallen down to 103. So if you eat less, your sodium may even fall with the same amount of water restriction. Let's look at effect of changing urine output. As your urine output increases, you are losing more milliosmol. So your sodium level after 24 hours is much lower than expected. So if you made 1 liter of urine, your sodium did not change. However, if you made 2.5 liters of urine, your sodium dropped to 102. If your urine osmolality improves with time, you can see that the sodium levels start improving. So at urine osmolality of 600, your sodium levels after 24 hours was 110. If your urine osmolality improves to 200, you can see that your sodium levels are now 114. If your incipient losses increase, your sodium will increase slowly. These are, however, very small changes. So if you have to figure out the water restriction, you need to know amount of osmoles patient is taking, what your urine output is, and what your urine osmolality is. If you look closely, the total amount of new body solute will depend upon the difference between amount of food eaten and amount of osmoles lost in urine and total body water which will depend upon the amount of water that's going in and amount of losses in urine and incipient losses. If your eyes and nose are balanced, for example, if your urine osmolality is 500 milliosmol per liter and you eat 500 milliosmol and you pee out a liter, you need around one liter of water restriction to keep the sodium at the same level. In this case, if you want your sodium to be increasing over time, use a number that is lower than one liter in this case, possibly 500 cc should be sufficient. So let's try to figure out how much water do you need to keep your sodium at the same level. In this, we'll be not using any numbers and 
we'll be deriving an equation to figure the amount of free water restriction. So the new total body solute will be amount of solute present before, that's 2 times sodium into total body water. You add amount of milliosmoles to the food and you subtract amount of milliosmoles lost through the urine. Your new total body water will be amount of water that you drank and you subtract amount of urine you made and incipient losses you had. So your new body osmolality is given in this equation. Now your new plasma sodium will be your new body osmolality divided by 2 and this would be same as your previous sodium levels. If you can solve for this equation, you will get free water restriction equals milliosmoles in food minus urine output multiplied by difference in urine and serum osmolality plus incipient losses. Now this is an important equation and you can understand few things from it. The first thing that this equation tells you that you need to increase your water restriction. That means drink more water to maintain your sodium if your intake of osmoles increases or if your incipient loss increase. And you have to decrease the water restriction that is drink less water to maintain the same level of sodium if your urine output increase or your urine osmolality increase. Take a moment and look at this equation and try to understand it before proceeding further. So let's talk about how much of water restriction do you need to increase your sodium by 5 milligrams per liter because this is more clinically relevant question. To keep it simple, we'll assume that I's and O's are balanced. That means your output is equal to total amount of water that you drank. You can solve for this equation. We'll add the incipient losses later because incipient losses do not have enough solute. So solving for this equation, you get a very simplified version where amount of solute that is required to increase your sodium by 5, that's 5 times 2 times total body water, is equal to milliosmoles in the food minus total amount of milliosmoles lost in the urine. Rearranging this equation, you get this formula. If you have 70 kilo person, your total body water is around 42 liters. If you eat 1000 milliosmol a day and your urine osmolality is 600 milliosmol a day, when you divide this, you get 0.93 liters. And if you can add around 300 cc of incipient losses, that comes out to be 1.23. If you put him on 1.23 liter water restriction and he drinks this much amount, your sodium next day will be 5 points higher. The same person, if he eats 500 milliosmol a day, he has to drink 0.43 liters for sodium to rise by 5 milliequivalents. If he drinks less than this, his sodium will rise higher. So what if your urine output is different than your water intake? So for this, we go back to our previous equation. Again, a 70 kilo person, he eats 500 milliosmoles a day. His urine osmolality is 600. His urine output is 1 liter. His sodium is 120, so his serum osmolality is 240 and let's say incipient losses are 0.3 liters and when you calculate this equation, you come out to be 0.88 liters. If he drinks less than 0.88 liters, his sodium will rise. If he makes more urine, his sodium will fall. If his urine osmolality decreases, his sodium will rise and if he has more incipient loss, his sodium will rise. So if you understand this equation, try to make a new equation which will tell you how much of water restriction will result in 5 increase in sodium and all you have to do is solve the prior equation by adding 5 to the sodium and that equation will have another component that is total body wa water in it and see if you can work that equation and write that in the comments. One of the things that you have to remember is everyone doesn't drink the total amount of water that you have placed on water restriction. So if your patient is placed on 1 liter water restriction and he drinks lower than this, his sodium will rise higher than expected. For example, in this case, when the sodium is 110, patient eating 1000 milliosmol with urine osmolality of 500, making 1 liter of urine. If he drinks 1 liter of water, his sodium will rise to 116 by the next day. However, if he drinks 500 cc of water, his sodium will be 119. And if he drinks no water, his sodium will be 122. For free water restriction decision, you have to look at your incipient losses, food, urine output and urine osmolality. Food and incipient losses will increase the free water restriction margin while increasing urine output and urine osmolality, you have to decrease the free water intake. 
to summarize what we have learned so far if you do not eat enough your sodium will not rise and in fact it may fall if you drink prescribed amount of water without eating enough solute and many patients do not eat well in the hospital so to overcome this you can use salt tablets or urea or hypertonic saline to give them osmoles if you drink lower than fluid restriction your sodium can rise rapidly hyponatremic patient usually are not thirsty so they don't drink enough water some of them are altered so they are npo if these patients are npo try to keep these patients on zero amount of free water any amount of water that they drink is going to dilute them further if your urine osmolality improves your sodium will be even higher so let's talk about the elephant in the room how do i know that how much will my patient eat and for this you have to understand some numbers usual 4 gram diet has about 900 milli osmol of solute in them you should be able to get some idea about how much your patient is eating from your nursing staff they should be able to tell you about how much percentage of the plate your patient has eaten so if patient eats half the plate he is possibly eating around 400 milli osmol one of the things that you might have guessed is there are couple of guesses that we are making in this equation we are trying to figure out how much your patient is going to eat in next 24 hours how much urine is he going to produce and how his urine osmolality will change certainly there is some guesswork involved in this but this is an educational guess this is possibly better than putting everybody on 1 liter free water restriction this will also help you figure out how the sodium is going to change in your patient so keep in mind that your sodium levels will be erratic unless you understand that you have to take both input and output into account there is another way of trying to figure out if your water restriction is working for this you have to check your urine sodium and urine potassium levels and if the sum of these two is more than serum sodium your fluid restriction is probably inadequate free water restriction is an educated guess but there is a methodology behind it this is possibly better than restricting 1 liter for everyone if your ins and outs are well matched the ratio of milli osmoles in food divided by the urine osmolality can give you a starting point for fluid restriction rise and fall in the sodium will depend upon how much your patient eats or drinks what your patient urine osmolality is and how much your urine output is and what are incipient losses if your urine sodium plus urine potassium is more than serum sodium fluid restriction is likely inadequate so the free water restriction decision is based on your educated guess about how much your patient will eat and how much urine and its concentration will be thank you